Are you tired of proving theorems by hand? Are you tired of proofs that aren't even right? You need Lean 4, an automated theorem prover. When you call in the next 30 minutes, you'll not only get an automated theorem prover, but also a functional programming language. But wait, there's more. Join me in this full-length video and watch a guy learn how to prove a theorem about natural numbers in Lean 4. Do I completely know what I'm doing? No. But it's okay, because our work will be checked by Lean 4. Alright, let's jump in. We're going to be doing an example from the online Theorem Proving in Lean 4 book. If you want to check that out, I'll link that in the description. That's a great resource, and here's actually what we're doing. I've translated over here this, this proof that we're going to be working on. We have variables, uh, and these are all numbers, natural numbers. Uh, we have variables a equals b, b equals c plus 1, c equals d, e equals 1 plus d. If it's possible, we want to show that a is equal to e. We're not directly proving these statements, we're just assuming that they're true. First, let's introduce in lean some variables. So the way we do that is by typing variable, and we say we have variables a, b, c, d, and e, and we'll type this colon and type nat. We have our five variables, and we see a little colon here and the word nat. And so what this colon means is that these variables all have type nat. And the way you read this is that nat is of type type. We won't get into in this first video what it means to be of type type, but this colon, whenever you see this colon, just think of type. That should sort of make sense to us that we have five variables and they're all natural numbers. Now we're going to type our four assumptions that we listed here. We'll model them as variables. We'll say we have another variable and we'll call it h1. Uh, they do this in the lean book. We could call it whatever we want, but we'll say h1 a equals b. The type of h1 is this proposition that a equals b. We'll type our other ones. h2 is of type b equals c plus 1. You might be noticing too on the right hand side of my screen, there's this little info window. It's another part of Lean's integration with VS Code that's really nice. As we type, this updates dynamically and so we can very interactively check out parts of our proof. We've now stated all of our assumptions. So everything you see, these first four lines here, that's how this looks in Lean. And again, we could have called these h1 through 4 anything. Let's list out our theorem here. Theorem, we'll call it t, we could call it whatever we want, and we'll say it's of type a equals e. This thing after the colon here is what we are trying to prove. We would like to show that a equals e, given these other things are true. Now we'll use this little colon equals symbol here, which means what follows after this is the proof of this. Lean has a, a few ways you can write proofs. We're kind of just diving into one way that's a balance of interesting but not super advanced. We're doing a type of proof called a calculational proof in lean terminology. As we go line by line, we'll prove statement by statement that things are true. So we'll type calc here. We would like to show that a equals b to begin our proof. And how are we going to show that? Well, very easy. We assumed that that is true. You can see up on line two that that's our assumption, h1, that a does in fact equal b. We'll prove that using h1. Seems okay, but we see that we have a type mismatch. And let's look, look over in our info view here. And we see that our theorem has type a equals b, but we really wanted it to have type a equals e. And once the theorem does have type a equals e, that means we're done. It's basically telling us we're not finished yet. So let's see if we can go a little bit further. We also now want to say that b equals c plus 1, and we'll show that using h2. If those two things are true, it should also be true that c plus 1 equals d plus 1. How do we show that? Here we're going to use a function called conger arg. Just kind of bear with me for a sec. We'll say conger arg nat dot set h3. This is kind of a little more involved than the other two, and we'll describe what's going on here. In lean, 
function application, and it uses spaces. Kind of keeping that in mind, let's hover over conger arg and see if we can make sense of what it's saying. So it says, congruence in the function argument, if a1 equals a2, then f of a1 equals f of a2 for any non-dependent function f. And now we see like a whole bunch of kind of <laughs> gibberish looking stuff at the top, but let's actually just walk through that a little bit, uh, glossing over a few things. What it's saying is this upside down a symbol, if you've read math textbooks, means for all. So it's for all variables, alpha and beta of type type, we don't really care about that part. If we have a1 and a2 that are of type alpha, and we have a function that goes from alpha to beta, and we have a1 and a2, then f of a1 equals f of a2. And so what you'll see in a, hopefully in a second here, how that concretely applies to our use case here. The first argument is a function that goes from alpha to beta. And that's this function here. So it's nat.sec, which is the successor function on the natural numbers. So all we see is that sec n equals n plus one. That's our first function. And what that comes out to in our type definition up here, that is this f that goes from alpha to beta. In this case, it's coincidental that alpha and beta are both natural numbers. So we have our first function here, nat.sec, and then we have h3 here, which is our proposition that c equals d. That's our second argument to this conger arg function, a1 equals a2. What we're saying here is that if we, we have our function that goes from natural number to natural number in this uh, equality here, if we feed these two things into conger arg, then we, we have proved that f of a1, so suck of c equals suck of d. We've proved that c plus one equals d plus one. I'd like to prove that d plus one equals one plus d. All right, and we're going to use another function here, nat.addcom, and we'll pass it d and one. Let's try and read this type definition here. Uh, it's a little simpler than the other one. So what we're saying is, again, this upside down a for all m, n, and m that are of type natural number, n plus m equals m plus n. These are our two arguments. D in our case is n and uh, one is m here. You can see D is of type nat and one is also of type nat. So they satisfy this requirement here that both n and m have to be of type nat. So this proves that n plus m equals m plus n. And maybe you're kind of wondering like, well, how is that the case? The cool thing about lean is that we, we don't have to know. Proving that has already been done for us by using this function nat.addcom. We're trusting this function, like that has already been done. We don't have to care how that happens. We're using it as a building block in our larger proof. Okay, so we're getting pretty close here. And let's kind of just remind ourselves where we're at. The way to follow this is kind of in like a zigzag pattern. D plus one here is equal to C plus one, and C plus one is equal to B on line 10, and B is equal to A on line nine. So, so far, we've proved that A is equal to D plus one from lines nine through 11, and then on line 12 that d plus one equals one plus d. So we've proved so far that a equals one plus d. But we, we're not quite done yet. We wanted to show that a equals e. So let's finish off this proof. We'll say for our final step that one plus d equals e. And how are we going to show that? Okay, we'll use this other function eq dot symmetric h of h4. So let's look at the type definition for this eq.sim or symmetric function. We see in the description, equality is symmetric. If a equals b, then b equals a. And again, we don't have to know how that is working. We're using that as a building block and hopefully these type signatures make a tiny bit more sense now. So we see for all alpha of type type, we have a and b that are of type alpha, um, a a equals B implies that B equals A. And H4 
up here says E equals one plus D. What this is saying is if we assume that E equals one plus D, then we can use the symmetry of equality to show that one plus D equals E. And maybe this is like a little bit pedantic. Okay, we've already shown this, why do we need to do anything really to flip it around, but that's actually something I like about Lean and these automated proof systems in general is that they really make sure that you're thorough and you go step by step. Now we see no more errors in our info view. Go down here and we type check. We can actually type check T and we see here the type of T. So yeah, that's that's our proof. And what's uh, what's notable here is just that We've now shown that T has a correct type. T having the, the type we expect here of A equals E is equivalent to a proof in math that A equals E. If we print T, we can see actually that in the implementation, what we've done in lines nine through 13 is we've created a function that takes in all of these arguments, A, B, C, D, E, H, one, two, three, four, and it uses this transitivity function and just keeps calling this transitivity function a bunch of times on some of these variables to build up the proof. What we've done here on lines 9 through 13 is a human-friendly way of, of writing what, what we could have equivalently written. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. If you, if you enjoyed this video, please uh, consider liking and subscribing. And if there's something in particular about lean or automated theorem proving that um, that kind of stuck out to you or you'd like to learn more about, please comment below.